everyone. Welcome to our channel. Rebecca's doing the crew. I'm Rebecca, and today we have three different projects for you. So let's go over number one. We'll be making this sign. So the supplies we're going to need, we'll need this large frame from Dollar Tree. I know it says Mainstays, which is a Walmart brand, but they have been carrying them at the Dollar Tree. Also some of these wall creation stickers, and then we will need um, either some vinyl, some of the wall stickers, or some poster letters to create a sign. We'll need some different colors of vinyl some hot glue, a paintbrush, scissors, a lighter, twine, Mod Podge, and some paint. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is pop this frame off and then we're going to remove the backing and the paper and the protective film that's over the sheet. Now, if you can't find this frame at the Dollar Tree, that's okay. You could just use their larger frame, which is the 11, I believe by 13, or you can get these at uh, Walmart really cheap as well. So now we're just going to pour some paint right in the center of the large frame frame uh, the cover there and we're going to start working with the paint brushes to create these diagonal stripes and we're going to cover the center as much as we can and leaving space around the outside so that we can see through the cover. And we're going to work all the way into the corner try to cover it as much as you can in the center so you don't have any streaks and then we'll just set this aside to dry so it's okay if you kind of have it streaky on the edges that's kind of like the whole um, look of the sign is those streaky edges which is really pretty so now we're going to make sure the paint's completely dry before we add mod podge i put the back uh, back on just so you guys could see it a little bit better and this is the paint side up and we're just going to take some Mod Podge and a sponge or a paintbrush and we're just going to go over it. Now if you don't use the cardboard backing for your sign you'll definitely want to put the Mod Podge over the paint. If you are using the backing then you could probably skip this step. I wasn't really sure at first how I was going to do this sign so I used the Mod Podge to let that dry. Then I decided to go ahead and cover the back of my sign. So I'm taking some gold vinyl from Dollar Tree and laying it underneath of the cardboard backing to the sign. I draw along the edge and then just cut it with my scissors and I'll need two pieces. And I tape it down to the sign uh, backing on one side and then I fold the other side over so that I can remove some of the protective backing. And once I have that protective backing removed just a little bit, it's real easy to line it up on the edge there. And then I can pull the opposite side up and then very slowly work my way across, putting this all the way down without any bubbles and just slowly removing that protective film. And I'll do the exact same to the um, top portion so that's completely covered in the gold glitter vinyl from Dollar Tree. So we'll cover the entire background with the vinyl and then you can leave that off again if you don't want to put the backing on your sign. I'm going to use it in mine. So I am going to go ahead and put that on now and start putting the black frame back on the poster because I have the whole inside of the picture completely finished and everything else is going to go on the front of the picture. So now this is when you want to plan out what you're saying is going to be on the front of your sign or your picture. So you can start working on how you're going to lay out your design. So for me, I chose to use a saying that I found on the internet and I printed it out on my Cricut. But again, you could use like the poster letters. There's lots of different wall creation stickers from Dollar Tree that you could use with different sayings on them that would work really well on these signs. So this is the saying that I chose. It says, life is sweet when you be kind. And B is spelled like, you know, a B, a bumblebee. And I'll just peel off that transfer tape. And now I have all the words attached to the front of the sign. And then we'll start cutting out the wall creation stickers to put on the sign. And you don't want to stick them on until you've got pretty much a plan in place of how you're going to layer these stickers. So I just love this one with the um, flowers on it and the bumblebees. I just think it's so pretty. And I love that the um, stickers have that clear um, border around them. It makes it really nice to attach to these signs. So I'm going to put a B on both sides of the words that I put on my sign. And 
and then I'll start cutting out the flowers to do the top and bottom corner. Now you will need um, some of the other bees from the other three signs or two signs uh, sheets of stickers that you purchase for the other crafts that we're going to need. But for this one, we'll use both of the bees on this sign. Then I cut out a few of those dotted uh, lines that are used to make it look like the bumblebees are flying around. And I attach those to the sign as well. And then just start cutting out my flowers. Now, as you can see, I'm trimming around the flowers, but I'm not being super meticulous about how I cut them out. Um, again, it's got that clear sticker on the outside. And once it's on the sign, you don't really see it. I still have my protective backing on those flowers. I'm going to completely lay them out and figure out where I want them to be and how I have to put them on as far as layering goes so anything that's going to be in the background you'll want to put down first and anything that's going to be you know on top obviously you'll do last so these little flowers I wanted in the background because I had to cut around them and it wasn't a perfectly smooth edge but then I can layer these larger flowers that I was able to cut out underneath and it makes it a little bit easier to attach the flowers and have them look correct. So I've got my top flowers on, and now we'll work on the bottom corner. So this is really easy to do. I can't stress enough how important it is to plan out how you're going to layer them before you stick them to the sign. So now if you're not using that cardboard backing, you are going to want to do this step, which is to wrap the frame with the twine. So I wrap each side with um, three wraps of the twine, and then I just tie it in a knot on the corners, and then I do all four sides. This is just to help hold that frame on because it doesn't stay really well without that backing on. And then as you can see, I just tie that little corner in a knot so that it stays together, and you can add some glue onto the back. Then I just use my lighter to get those little hairs off of the twine. And this is the whole sign completely finished. So I made one of these for my daughter's wedding. I did not put the backing on, which is how I knew you needed to use the twine to hold that frame on. So this is what it looks like without the cardboard backing. And you can see through the edges there. So now for our second craft, we're going to make, um, we'll go over the supplies. We'll need some paint markers and paint from the Dollar Tree. They do sell the paint markers there. They're the Crafter Square brand. We'll also need some ribbon. I also got that from Dollar Tree, a pencil, some sunflowers or other flowers of your choice, some of the wall stickers, this DIY gnome. We're also going to use some of this bumblebee cardstock, another piece of cardstock, some scissors. We'll also need some hot glue and some Mod Podge. And then we're going to need a paintbrush. Also a dotting tool, it's one of the embossing tools from Dollar Tree. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is take our Dollar Tree wooden gnome sign and we're going to draw the feet or the shoes on the bottom. At first I put the little soles on the shoes, but then I decided just to paint the whole thing black so you can skip that part. Now use your cardstock to cut out a hexagon shape so we can use that as a stencil on our project. So we're just going to trace around it and make a honeycomb on the hat in a couple spots. Spots. I'm going to do this bottom corner and I'm essentially trying to hide the stars that are wood burned into the sign so they're not really deep so it's kind of easy to hide it you just need to paint over it so I got a few pieces of honeycomb down in the corner I do a few pieces on the other side of the hat as you can see here I do about three and then another one up at the top and I do want to leave some open spaces. So I'm going to do uh, glue some flowers onto the hat as well. So once I have that all done, I'm just going to paint the hat with some white paint. And it's see-through enough that I'm able to see the pencil marks, which is nice because I'll need to see those to trace over them when this is dry. So I just paint the whole top of the hat white. And then we're going to paint his beard a bright yellow. And then I just left his nose in neutral color. I just left it as is. So once the beard's painted, I went ahead and painted the um, bottom of his outfit to make him look like pants. So I'm just using the same white paint that I used for the hat to fill in the pants.
And once we have that done, we will start working on the shoes. And we're just going to paint those a solid black. And now that the shoes are done, we can start to decorate the outfit with our embossing tool from Dollar Tree. So I'm just dipping the end into the paint. I'm using the yellow and the black paint to make dots. I, there's no rhyme or reason where I put the polka dots. I'm just trying to decorate his outfit to match the rest of him and the rest of the project. So we're just using the yellow and the black paint to create the dots on his pants on both sides of the sign. So it's really easy to do. Just remember less is more. It's always easier to add more than it is to take them off. So now we're going to use that scrapbook paper. You could skip this step if you don't have it. I just had this on hand and I'm just going to cut out these two little bees off of the scrapbook paper. You could also print them off the internet. You could just draw them on. If you want to add them, it's really up to you. So then I go over the honeycomb on the hat now that it's dry with some metallic gold paint. And I did end up doing two coats of the metallic gold just because it was really see-through and I wanted to make sure I had a really pretty shimmer. Once that was dry, I took the Crafter Square brand uh, paint marker in black and I trace over the honeycomb. And that really helps that honeycomb to pop off of the hat there, as you can see. And then I wanted him to stand out a little bit more, so I trace all the way around the hat. I trace around his beard. And then we'll do his nose and around the top of the hat. And also we will trace the edges of his pant legs. And this really helps him to stand out a little bit better. Now we have one of those bee stickers, so I'm trying to decide where to put it. I decided to put it up on the hat, and you could Mod Podge over that to make sure that it stays on. And then I took the um, paint marker again. I drew some little dotted lines to look like he was flying around, and some Mod Podge to add the two little bumblebees that I um, cut out of that scrapbook paper. And we'll Mod Podge over top of them as well. So I'm adding the Mod Podge over top of the Bumblebee sticker just to make sure that he stays on there. So I made two simple bows of different sizes to layer on the top of the hat. And I'm using this Dollar Tree ribbon that they've had out recently with the different bees and the honeycomb pattern. Now I want to hide that star at the top. So I'm going to add some of the sunflowers. I got these around the fall time last year. They sell them every year. They, at least they've had them out the last three. If you can't find these uh, little flowers here. You can use any flower. They have lots of yellow ones out at Dollar Tree. So I glue a few flowers to the hat and the gnome is done. So now um, we're going to work on the honeycomb. So we have the sign from Dollar Tree. It's just a piece of wood. We'll need a ruler, scissors, and a pencil. We're also going to use the Mod Podge and the stickers again. We're also going to need the hot glue and some paint and paint markers. And of course the ribbon that we used earlier, some sunflowers, some twine, and a sponge. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is just draw a border around the honeycomb. So just about a quarter of an inch you want to draw all the way around. And then we'll use that same stencil we made out of the cardstock earlier. We'll use that to create a honeycomb on the um, large wood piece. So I kind of messed up at first. I wasn't layering it right. My kids were talking to me and I was a little bit distracted. So I did fix it. Um, I couldn't really get all the pencil marks off, but I covered them fairly well. So 
So I kept adding these little pieces until I got it all the way to the top edge um, or about midway. And then I added some of the antiquing wax with a paper towel over the top of the wood piece. And then I painted it with some black chalk paint. And I'm making sure that I don't paint over the border that I drew earlier and the honeycomb, of course, I don't want to dry, uh, you know, paint over that. And then I did paint the edges of the sign black. Now I'm just going to go over the honeycomb pieces that we drew with the uh, paint marker here. This wasn't popping as much as I wanted it to, so I add a few more details, which you'll see here in just a second. So I'm taking a yellow paint marker and I'm tracing around the honeycomb pieces that I used with the stencil. And then I took the gold paint marker and drew the little lines for the bees to look like they're flying. We'll let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll go in with the gold and just draw some dripping honey inside of the honeycomb pieces just at the very top. And you can skip this step. Those are, of course, optional, you know, parts of the sign. I just wanted to show you guys how I made mine. So then taking the white paint marker, I'm going to write home is where your honey bee. I know it's not proper English. It was just a funny play on words. So here's what it looks like. And we'll take one of those bee stickers and add that to the front and cover it with Mod Podge. So now we're going to make our bow. I'm just taking about five inch pieces of ribbon that I've trimmed on the edges and just keep layering them in a large X pattern. When you've got it pretty full, just tie it off with some twine. And then add one of the sunflowers to the front of the bow. There's a little wire on it, so it actually helps hold it all together. But I did add some hot glue to it as well. And then we'll just hot glue the large bow to the top of the sign. And you'll want to make sure you move the um, ribbon over so it's not covering your words. And we're just going to glue him to the gnome, the honeycomb to the gnome. And we'll make sure that the edges line up at the bottom so that it helps it to stand. And here it is all finished. And now we'll move on to our last and final project, project number three. So let's go over the supplies for this one. We will need a small piece of foam board, just a scrap piece really. We'll need some white paint, some antiquing wax, also a paintbrush and a paper towel. We'll need a Sharpie or a black marker, some sunflowers, also this little sign, some Spanish moss, greenery, and some scissors. We'll need some hot glue, and then let's get crafty. So this one's really easy. We're just going to draw um, an arc shape out of the scrap piece of foam board from Dollar Tree. And then you could use either scissors or a razor blade to cut around the edges to pop this piece of the sign out. And now we are going to start taking our twine and we're going to cover uh, the beehive here. So what we're going to do is just add some hot glue and start wrapping the beehive. And as you can see, I start like sliding the twine down. So it's really tightly um, packed in there. So it's really covered really well. You can overlap it a little bit as well. And just keep working your way all the way to the top. The top is a little bit harder to wrap, but it's not that hard. You just want to keep wrapping it in like a spiral. And so you've got the whole entire top portion wrapped. And as you can see, I'm adding glue and just kind of poking at it with the scissors to make sure all the little ends are down. Then I take a sunflower and I pull the center off and use that as a door and just glue that right to the front of the um, beehive there. I cut a flower petal off of a sunflower. That's going to be a bee body. And I had a little white flower. I cut one of the petals off and made wings out of it. So taking that yellow piece, I'm just going to draw some lines on it to look like a bee, the head at the top, and then we'll add a small dot of hot glue and attach that to the hive. Also the white uh, flower there I'm using as the um, wings to the bee. And we'll just add a small dot of glue to attach the wings.
Now we'll take some white paint and paint the inside of our sign. So I didn't want too much paint on it. I wanted it to dry kind of quick. And once we have the whole inside of the sign painted, we'll let it dry for a few minutes because we don't want to mix the paint colors together. Now you can leave the um, outside of the frame uh, natural color if you want. I'm going to use the antiquing wax and paint the inside edge and the top and then the outside edge with the antiquing wax and just wipe it off with the paper towel so there's just a little bit left behind but I did want that whole frame portion completely covered in the antiquing wax. Once that's dry I just add some uh, hot glue to the bottom and add some Spanish moss. I glue the hive on top and then I glue the flower in the greenery to the top. Super easy. That's the whole thing finished. So that's all three projects. We've got our beehive sign, our gnome with this honeycomb, and then the large sign. I hope you guys enjoyed these. I really had a lot of fun making them. We do craft videos every single Thursday using mainly items from Dollar Tree. And every Friday I show what's new at the Dollar Tree. And I go to about five stores each week and combine everything into one video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Have a great day, everyone.